In this video, I want to explain precisely what I do as a machine learning engineer. The aim is to help anyone who's looking to become a machine learning engineer, what we do, how we work, our typical day in life, and basically why I think it's such a great career. And I hope this video can help pinpoint if a career in machine learning is for you. Let's get into it. Due to this rapid acceleration in AI machine learning in recent years, the machine learning engineer role is still quite undefined and often varies between companies and even geographies. However, in general, it can be summarized as someone who uses software engineering, statistics, and machine learning skills to build and deploy algorithms into production. At some companies, there will be a large crossover between a data scientist and a machine learning engineer. However, the key distinction between the two roles is that a machine learning engineer will specifically know how to deploy solutions to production. This is something a data scientist will not be able to do in terms of like the general case. The need for the machine learning engineer only came around in the last few years. This is because originally it was a data scientist's job to build machine learning and statistical models. However, they would often be built in things like Jupyter notebooks, which have zero business value. So there needs to be a role that kind of combines the software engineering aspect and the data science aspect. And that's where machine learning engineers sits, like right in the middle. So their job is basically to bring this algorithm to life so it can actually generate tangible business value. Because of this broad skill set, a machine learning engineer is not an entry level role. And you'll typically need a few years experience as either a data scientist or software engineer first, and then upskill yourself in the other areas. So to summarize, the main responsibilities of a machine learning engineer is to train, build, and deploy machine learning models. You will need to be well versed in both data science, machine learning, and software engineering. So you need to know things like Python, SQL, AWS, Git, Docker, Kubernetes, Bash, and Zshell. So kind of the whole tech stack of from the Py data and also from the software engineering side. And finally, like I said, you need a couple of years experience as either a data scientist or a software engineer first. If you want a better understanding of all the various data and machine learning roles, then I recommend checking out some of my previous videos where I explain the differences between data analyst, data engineer, data scientist, and machine learning engineer in more depth. I'm linking on screen here and also in the description below. If you do want to be a machine learning engineer, then I recommend you follow DataCamp's machine learning engineer track who are kindly sponsoring this video. I am excited to tell you more about this course. This comprehensive track assumes you already have the basics of data science and builds on that to teach you the deployment and engineering skills you need in order to send your models to production. It's 44 hours of interactive content that upskill you in things like containerization, CICD, Docker, ETL, Git, Bash, GitHub Actions, just so many things that you need in order to deploy your models to production effectively. All of these things took me about a year to learn, but you can get them in just 44 hours. The reason I really recommend DataCamp is their learning experience. DataCamp really makes you learn through doing short videos followed by hands-on exercises. The track has two projects, one in MLOps, one in engineering, so you get real hands-on experience and also build projects that you can showcase to employers later on. I really recommend you check it out and I'll leave all the links in the description below. So I work as a machine learning engineer inside a cross-functional team and my team focuses on classical machine learning and also combinatorial optimization problems. Much of my work revolves around improving our machine learning and optimization models to improve the customer experience and also generate profitability and financial kind of uplift for the business. The general workflow for most of my projects goes as follows. The first thing is that someone will have an idea or hypothesis about how they can improve one of our models. Then we check if the data to either prove or disprove this hypothesis is readily available so that we can start researching. If the data is readily available, we can immediately start researching this new idea and testing if this feature is actually useful. We will then analyze the results of this research and confirm if the model has improved or not. And finally, if there is an improvement, we'll then productionize the solution so it's live for our customers and for the business. Along this process, there is a lot of interaction with other team members and other roles within the company. The idea phase is often done in collaboration with a product manager who brings that kind of business insight into the problem. So he will or they will 
find things that we may have missed that may impact other parts of the business that we just don't really know about. The data and analysis stages can be done in collaboration with data analysts and data engineers just to make sure we're using the right data sources and also helping us build the ETL, which stands for Extract Load Transform Pipelines, basically the data pipelines go into the model and just to make sure that's all working correctly and we're using the right data sources like I said and we're not having any weird things going wrong with the data because data is the most important part. In the research section we would work collaboratively with the data scientists who are bringing their statistical and machine learning skills to help us build that POC model and finally the shipping phase or deploy our model to production will be done with software engineers just to make sure that we are deploying using software engineering best principles and our code is completely robust. From experience, this workflow for machine learning engineers is pretty standard, but of course every company and industry will have slight variations. Machine learning engineers work in many different ways across an organization, but from experience and from what I've spoken to of other people, there are mainly three distinct options and the rest are kind of like a mix of all of them. The first one is the embedded system. So this is kind of how I work and from my conversations, this is how most of industry works, where you're a machine learning engineer inside a team that's responsible for a certain domain. So what I gave before as my example, I'm a machine learning engineer in a team that specializes in classical machine learning and optimization problems. But I am like one of six machine learning engineers, but we also have a few data scientists, some software engineers, a product manager, a data analyst. So the team is cross-functional in that there's people with different remits and skill sets that we all work together to achieve one business goal. Like I said, I quite like this way because you kind of learn a lot from other people and this is the most like standard approach I have seen in industry. The second one is like a complete flip side of that embedded system where you're a group of machine learning engineers acting like an in-house consultancy. So instead of being embedded or in a certain team, you're kind of part of your own kind of group of machine learning engineers and you often be deployed, as I call it, to different parts of the business to solve the most like high need solution at that time. So you're not necessarily going to be a specialist and what will happen is you may go from working on recommendation systems to working on, on an optimization model, for example, right? So you're working on various problems depending on where the value is at that point in time. So you're not in a team, you're in a team of machine learning engineers and you're kind of being spread all over the place, you know, every quarter, every month, wherever it may be. And finally, the last one is where you're an ML engineer working on the infrastructure or the platform for your company. So instead of solving the business problems, you develop tools, deployment processes, technologies that kind of streamline how other machine learning engineers can deploy their models to production. All ways of working have their pros and cons, and one is not better than the other, and it all comes down to personal preference. But to be honest, you're mostly at the mercy of where you work and how they structure their organization. But you still do exciting work nonetheless, so don't worry about it. People online often glamorize working in tech, like it's all coffee breaks, chats, coding an hour a day, and you make like 100k a year. I mean, I wish this was the case, and it certainly isn't, but compared to other professions, it is quite a nice place to work overall. My general experience is that the workday starts between 9 and 9.30, where you have a morning stand-up to discuss what you did yesterday and basically what you're gonna do today. Then after stand-up between 9.30 and 10.30, there might be another meeting, like an all hands, a sync of data science, some other stakeholder meeting, just any other meeting block that you may have. Then from 10.30 to 1 p.m., you have a coding block where you just get on with your project and any work you've been assigned for the day. Then from 1 to 2 p.m., you'll have lunch. And then from roughly two o'clock to 5.30, you typically have the afternoon free, at least I do in my company, where you can really focus and have deep work sessions about your projects. And like I said, any other work you have to do for that day. And then from 5.30 to six o'clock, you kind of wrap up, answer any Slack, emails, whatever it may be, and just kind of, you know, just tailor off your day and then go home. Of course, every day is different, but this is the general flow I have for most of my days. And it's pretty obvious, there's nothing extraordinary about it or as glamorized as people make it out to be. It is worth mentioning that this is the workday of someone who's a junior slash mid-level individual contributor. So I don't manage anyone and my sole kind of focus for my role is to deliver technical solutions. 
If you're a senior or a manager, then obviously you have more meetings, you have more interactions with senior stakeholders, etc. So again, depending what level you are and what company you're at, the workday might be slightly different. So why am I a machine learning engineer? Well, I can mainly boil it down to four main reasons. The first one is that it's just so interesting. I mean, unless you've been living under a rock, AI, machine learning are like massive buzzwords nowadays. So I directly get to work of all the latest trends technologies all the time. Don't get me wrong, sometimes it can be exhausting to keep up with everything, but I personally love it. Like, you know, every day there's something new, every day there's something kind of that's gonna revolutionize the industry, right? And so being in the forefront or being like right in the headwind of all these things that are going on, I just find it so exhilarating and it's just really exciting to work every day. The second one is that I get a really good work-life balance. This is quite common across tech and it's definitely a lot better than in areas like law, banking and consultancy. Most tech workers work like nine to six. Obviously hours can be flexible and you can work more or less depending on the nature of your work and your project at that time. But nine to six is like the average. You'll also get to work from home a couple of days of the week. So there's a lot of flexibility and that allows you to pursue other things. Like for me, it means I can write this blog, do this YouTube channel, play hockey, and I have time for all those things because I have the flexibility with my work. The third one is compensation. I mean, it's no secret that people in tech generally earn quite a lot or a lot more than the average. Uh, for example, according to Levels FYI, the average UK machine learning engineer, or the median, I should say, earns 93K a year, which is very, very high. And finally, as a machine learning engineer, you can work in a range of industries. So you can work in insurance, finance, consultancy, e-commerce, supply chain, banking, well, you know, pretty much every industry will have machine learning engineers. So you can really choose a career path that you personally like the business side of and also the tech side of, which is really, really good. If you do want to progress really high in your career, it's often better to specialize in a certain industry, but for entry level, this doesn't really matter. I hope this video gave you some clarity on what a machine learning engineer does. If you have any questions, then make sure you leave them in the comments below. And if you do want to learn more about machine learning, then I recommend you check out my newsletter, Additional Data. It's a weekly newsletter that I send every Monday morning, and it's all about my thoughts and experiences as a practicing machine learning engineer. If that sounds interesting, it's linked in the description below for you to check out.